Throughout my whole experience with the Souls games, my two most favorite stats have always been the same, strength and faith, or faith and strength. I do not prefer one over the other, so the best thing to do is to combine them. In Elden Ring, my first playthrough was done with a strength faith build, where I looked for ways to increase my defense and survivability, while maintaining a good offense and versatility through the appropriate use of incantations. As time went on, I continued to work on this strategy in order to maximize the potential of staying alive. I present to you The Last Sentinel, a build that is capable of taking large amounts of damage and then regenerate it in order to be able to take it again and again and again. As always, we will review the stats of this build, the equipment that we use and of course its applications within the game. Since there is a lot of ground to cover, I have created timestamps in the description of this video in order to make it easier to navigate the content and give you the opportunity to skip straight to the part that interests you the most. Let's get started. This is a PvE focused build that works well both solo and in jolly cooperation, with the objective of combining the power of strength and the versatility of faith in order to create a tank type character that will maximize your chances of survival against any enemy or any terrain that you will find in the lands between. We aim to gather a large health pool with constant regeneration as well as strong damage negations, using them as the cornerstone of a monster that will win every single battle of attrition. Whether you are exploring the lands between, helping fellow Tarnished or facing the toughest bosses in the game, this build will provide the perfect canvas to learn each fight and to overcome every challenge. To reach this objective we will be running the following stats. Start the game as a Vagabond. This class is the most efficient to reach the required stat block for this build, allowing us to make use of every rune level possible to its maximum potential. As the primary focus of this build is PvE, I have chosen to base it on rune level 150. Finally, this is the stats block that you want to end up with. 60 Vigor, 18 Mind, 37 Endurance, 55 Strength, 13 Dexterity, 9 Intelligence, 30 Faith, and 7 Arcane. There are many ways to reach these stats. Level up however you feel comfortable. That said, I do recommend that you take the following path. As soon as you reach the lands between, the first thing to do is get your vigor to 20. Survivability is more important than damage when you are just starting out the game. The second priority is to get the stats to wield the golden halberd dropped by the tree sentinel at the beginning. This means 20 strength, 14 dexterity and 12 faith. At this point, you will be forced to use the halberd with two hands. I am sure you may have noticed that we are going over the 13th dexterity that is shown in the final build. This is planned. The golden halberd will carry us throughout the game as we level up our character. When the build is finished, we will respec in order to optimize everything. With your health in good standing and your weapon dealing the damage, the third priority is to get endurance to 20. This will help with wearing heavy and armor, which will in turn increase your defense. Now it's time to bulk up, and your fourth priority is Vigor to 40. This will allow you to survive comfortably through the mid game, allowing you to focus on your other stats. The fifth priority is Strength and Endurance to 30. This will allow you to use the Golden Halberd with one hand, and the extra Endurance will open up the possibilities of using a shield. The sixth priority is to top off Vigor at 60. This will put you at our required HP pool, granting you maximum security. Next up, we focus on power, so strength goes straight to 55. The Golden Halver scales mostly off strength, so now you will see a good jump in attack power. For your eighth priority, bring faith to 30. Now, you will have the best support spells unlocked and a slight damage boost to all your faith scaling weapons. Next, 
We bring up Endurance to 37 and Mind to 17, giving you the support you need to increase your defense and allow for increased spell and skill use. Finally, as we mentioned before, we have been running the Golden Halver as the carry weapon. With the build finish, we no longer need it, so respect the build by taking one point from Dexterity, going from 14 to 13, and putting it into Mind, going from 17 to 18. So, why do we want these final stats? Allow me to explain. Vigor at 60 because I believe it is the perfect amount of health to survive the hardest hitting attacks of PvE. This will give us the total of 1,900 base HP. It is the second cap for the stat. Going any higher really diminishes your returns, and honestly, I would never go any lower. Mind at 18 because it has been min-maxed in order to be able to cast a full buff rotation with a single FP bar. This gives us a total FP of 110. Casting all the buffs in a setup costs 107 FP at most. Endurance at 37 because it is exactly the amount that I need to be able to use my favorite weapons and armor while maintaining a medium load. This has been perfectly min-maxed to the last decimal. Any lower and you lose the build any higher and you are wasting points. Strength at 55 because it is the soft cap for the stat and it allows us to get a good return in damage with the weapons that we use when taking into consideration the investment that we make. This is our primary offensive stat. Dexterity at 13 because it is the base level of the Vagabond and it is already enough to let us use the weapons that we need. Intelligence at 9, because it is the base level of the Vagabond. We do not increase it at all in this build. Faith at 30, because this is the level that we need in order to use the strongest buff incantations in the game. Also, it could be our secondary damage stat and provide some holy damage scaling. Finally, Arcane at 7, because it is the base level of the Vagabond. We do not increase it at all in this build. Moving on to the equipment, this is the basic layout of the build. When the build has been finished, our weapon of choice will be the Heavy Great Stars. This weapon combines some key characteristics that generate the perfect armament for this build. First and foremost, it is a strength-based weapon that favors the heavy affinity, meaning that we will be getting the most scaling possible out of our strength stat. Second, this weapon deals strike damage. There are not many enemies that resist this kind of damage, and better yet, there are a handful of enemies that are really weak to it. As a result, this weapon will perform magnificently in situations where others would fall short. Next up, this weapon has a special effect that heals you for 1% of your total health each time that you hit an enemy. In this build, our total HP can be between 2100 to 2900 HP, approximately, depending on the different factors that we can take advantage of. Which means that each hit from this weapon will heal us about 21 to 29 HP, once again, per hit. I want to make sure that you understand this. Per hit. That means that if you hit multiple enemies with a sweeping attack, you will heal this amount for each enemy that you hit. I explain this in detail in another section of this video. You can find the template in the description. The next perk of this weapon is the fact that you can modify its Ash of War. This adds versatility to the weapon and it helps you deal with different situations. That being said, my favorite Ash of War to use with this weapon is Prayerful Strike. With this Ash of War, the Tarnished will focus holy energy on the weapon by holding it above its head and bringing it down to strike your enemy. While the attack charges, you have a lot of poise and very few attacks will interrupt you. This attack deals a good amount of damage, but the most important effect is that it will heal you and your nearby allies for 30% of your maximum health on each hit once again on each hit so if you hit multiple enemies with the same attack you will heal 30 percent 
for each enemy struck. That is a lot of recovery. Taking into consideration the amount of HP that we can get with this build, we can recover about 630 to 880 HP per hit. The best part is that this recovery stacks with the one we get from the weapon. This means that the 1% from Great Stars is added to the 30% from Prayerful Strike. For all of these reasons, Great Stars provide everything this build needs. Good damage and top tier recovery. Oh yeah, and one more thing, the final note about Great Stars. This weapon has an init blood loss of 55 units. We don't focus on this, but it is a nice added bonus that we get. The additional damage from a possible bleed proc increases the offensive potential of the weapon. But that's not all. We can use the consumable blood grease on this weapon in order to further increase the potential for the blood loss proc. All in all, this weapon provides everything this build needs and it performs exceptionally well, both offensively and defensively, by keeping our health topped off. In the offhand, I run the Icon Shield, inciting the true spirit of the Earth Tree and calling back all the way to Demon Souls Adjudicator Shield, this Great Shield will provide a sturdy wall for most attacks and a very useful HP regeneration bonus of 3 HP per second. It is true that it only has 95% physical blocking capabilities, but between our high damage negation and HP regeneration, it is very easy to recover any possible damage that we received from a block. The Icon Shield provides all of this alongside a very manageable 11.5 units of weight. This is extremely good for a Great Shield. That being said, I will say one thing. Do not upgrade this shield to plus 10. Save the materials. You keep this shield at plus 9. Going up to plus 10 does not provide any additional guard boost, and so it makes it a useless upgrade for this bit. Now, moving on to our incantation seal. In this image, you will see that it is in our main hand but you can also use it in the offhand if you desire. It works well in both. I personally prefer the main hand, so the shield continues to regenerate my health while I cast any spells. In this case, we are using the Frenzied Flame Seal. This is the perfect seal for this build for two reasons. First, it has no weight. With 0.0, .0 units of weight, it does not increase our equip burden at all. While it is true that this seal will have very weak incantation scaling with our stats, honestly, we only cast buff spells that are not affected by scaling. This means that as long as it can cast our incantations, its power is irrelevant. Second, this seal has no stat requirement. This means that any character with any build and any starting class can use it without any investment in skill points. When it comes to min-maxing for a buff-only build, this is the best seal that we can use. With our weapons out of the way, let's talk about talismans. As I mentioned, this is a tank build, and so we are looking for two things. Health and damage negation. For this reason, the first three talismans are the Earth Tree Favor Plus 2 for additional health, stamina, and equip load, the Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman for a significant boost to our damage negation, and the Crimson Amber Medallion Plus 2 for a significant health boost. The final talisman is the Blessed Dew Talisman for a constant 2 HP per second health regeneration. With these talismans active, we will be running a total of 2,134 HP, with a base 47% damage negation, alongside a consistent 5 HP per second health regeneration, thanks to the Icon Shield and the Blessed Dew Talisman stacking with each other. 
I would like to take this opportunity to make something very clear. This setup will not make you immortal. It is not supposed to. This setup is supposed to increase your chances of survival by providing a way to save resources. It also gives you the chance to make a few more mistakes before you actually die. Do not use it as a crutch. Use it as a tool to save some resources while you're exploring caves, catacombs, or the best terrain of the lands between. Make enough mistakes and you will still die. The better you play and the more you know about the game, the stronger this build gets. Alright, let's talk about armor. In this game, armor is extremely important. This is because this game has extremely good looking armor. Fashion Souls, or Elden Bling, however you prefer to call it, is at an all time high. For this build, I use my favorite armor set in the game, the Tree Sentinel set. I use the chest, gloves, and legs from this set. I am not a fan of the helmet because it looks like you have a broom on your head, so instead I use the Leindel Soldier Helm, and this provides me with the full Golden Paladin look that I need, as well as providing me with great damage negation and poise. In this build, specifically, I prefer to use the cape. That said, the build has been min-maxed to work with the cape or without it, so pick what you prefer. In any case, this armor, set up alongside the Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman, provides us a very durable 47% base physical damage negation and a total of 56 poise if you use the cape and 53 poise if you don't. As you can see, we are more than capable of taking a few hits. Next up, I want to go over the consumable items and the summon that I prefer to use with this build in order to support it and increase its strength. In regards to consumables, I keep sleeping pots and freezing pots for my throne items, with blood grease and freezing grease for my weapon buffs. In Elden Ring, status effects are very powerful. Keeping these items ready allows me to have access to frostbite and sleep in order to turn any situation into my favor. The weapon buffs are for the same reason. Blood Grease lets me stack bleed on my weapon for quicker procs, and Freezing Grease is a good alternative against enemies that might be resistant to bleed. It is a matter of having multiple options available. As for the summon, the Mimic is perfect for this build. Remember that this summon copies your build entirely. With a large health pool, a great shield, and regenerating health, the Mimic is the perfect tank for the tank. The sheer amount of damage that this summon can take is astounding and, since we are also tanking, we will be fighting side by side with the summon, splitting aggro and damage among the both of us. It is the perfect tool for added survivability. Now. Remember when we spoke about Prayerful Strike? Well, the Mimic also has access to it. The Mimic can also use it to attack and heal itself for 30% of maximum HP. Even better, remember that Prayerful Strike also heals nearby allies, so you can heal the Mimic and the Mimic can heal you. This creates a synergy of two monsters that continue to heal each other while simultaneously dealing damage to all enemies. For this reason, the best strategy is to try fighting side by side with your summon to take advantage of as many heals as possible. No enemy can stand up to this, and very few bosses have the damage output to endanger you. If you combine this strategy with smart play, it will be very difficult to take you down. Just make sure that you have FP. Up to this point, we have spoken about the equipment and the armor. We have talked about offense and defense. As such, there's only one last thing to cover, the incantations that we will use to increase our power. Indeed, this build is very buff heavy. We can reach incredible amounts of damage and become a true tank where even the mightiest of blows barely scratches us. The only downside is that it is temporary. Learning to manage your incantations and buffs is extremely important. Learning how to use them 
when to use them, how long it takes to reapply them, and, of course, which ones go together is extremely important. Let's take a look and understand how these buffs are going to work. In this build, we will be using all of our memory slots in order to prepare us for any situation that we may find. As such, the list of spells that we will use is the following. Flame Cleanse Me Black Flames Protection Barrier of Gold Flame Protect Me Golden Lightning Fortification Lord's Divine Fortification Golden Bow Flame Grant Me Strength Blessings Boon and heal. First up, Flame Cleanse Me is one of the most powerful incantations in the game. It provides a fast, cheap way to get rid of poison and, most importantly, Scarlet Rot. This should be the first spell on your list. Always have it ready, because it will always make your life easier. Second, we have the Resistance Crew. The Quintet of Black Flames Protection, Barrier of Gold, Flame Protect Me, Golden Lightning Fortification, and Lord's Divine Fortification is our main tool to counterpick the damage that each of the game's enemies and bosses will do. They provide resistances to physical, magic, fire, lightning, and holy damage respectively. You should always have one of these actives if you want to increase your chances of survival. It is very important to know what you're up against so that you can help yourself and your allies survive the battle. Third, our Damage Bulkers. The combination of Golden Bow and Flame Grant Me Strength will provide us a huge boost of damage whenever it is required. As you know, Golden Bow also increases our defense, so it should be the buff that is always active because it is the most versatile. Fourth, the Healing Duo. Blessings Boon provides us 8 HP regeneration per second that stacks with the Icon Shield and the Blessed Dew Talisman for a total of 13 HP per second regeneration. This is very good and it will go very far in saving your resources. Save your flasks for when they matter. Now, Heal is the second spell in this healing duo, but honestly, do not use it to heal yourself. It is not made for that purpose. In fact, I use this spell for one thing and one thing only. To kill Revenants. Revenants are one of the most powerful and annoying non-boss type enemy that you can find in the game. They deal incredible amounts of damage and are in constant motion and attack. They teleport around the area and I am sure you know have that one stupid move where they hit you one million times with all of their limbs in succession. It is very difficult to fight them, but fortunately, if you do not let them get started on their offense, then they become much easier. In order to achieve this, we use heal. Revenants are very weak to holy damage, but also they are extremely weak to healing spells. If you cast a healing spell with an AoE and it catches the Revenant, they will take damage instead of being healed. The amount of damage they take is always the same, about 60% of their total HP. Two spells will always kill them, and since the first spell also staggers them, it is very easy to cast two of them back to back for the kill. Since the damage is always the same, I like to use heal because it costs the least FP of all the AoE heals. If you execute this strategy correctly, then you will defeat the Revenant before it even has a chance to hit you. As you can see, this list of incantations covers the most bases possible and allows you to always have an answer to every problem that you face. The best part is that this answer applies to you and your allies, meaning that you become an extremely valuable summon. You can tank, you can deal damage, and most importantly, you can mitigate the damage that your host takes. As a build that uses a lot of buffs, one of the most important things to know is which buffs stack with each other, and also what should be the casting order. Let's go over this so you can understand which buffs you should cast 
and most importantly, how you should be casting them. In regards to stacking buffs, I have done all the testing with the incantations that this build uses, and there are two setups for buffing your character. There is the offensive setup, and then there is the defensive setup. When it comes to offense, we can stack three buffs. Golden Bow, Flame Grant Me Strength, and Blessings Boom. When it comes to defense, we can stack three buffs. Golden Bow, any of the damage negations, and Blessings Boon. For example, if you want physical damage negation, you stack Golden Bow with Black Flame's Protection alongside Blessings Boon. Now, if you want magic damage protection, you stack Golden Bow with Barrier of Gold alongside Blessings Boon, so on and so forth. That being said, it is important to cast these buffs in the right order, so that we can maximize the uptime that we get from them. Please know that Blessings Boon has a duration of 90 seconds. Golden Bow has a duration of 80 seconds. Flame Grant Me Strength has a duration of 30 seconds. Finally, all of the damage negation spells have the same duration, 70 seconds. This means that in order to maximize uptime in our buffs, you need to cast them in the following order. For the offensive setup, first is Blessings Boon, second is Golden Bow, and third is Flame, Grant Me Strength. For the defensive setup, first is Blessings Boon, second is Golden Bow, and third is whichever damage negation spell that you need. As for the results of each setup, well, the offensive setup gets you about 22% more attack power, it leaves you with 52% physical damage reduction and 8 HP regeneration that stacks with the 5 HP regeneration that we already have, for a total of 13 HP per second regeneration. This will last for about 70 to 80 seconds, depending on how efficient you are at casting. The defensive setup will give you about 15% additional attack power, 69% physical damage reduction if you choose to go down that path, or 52% physical damage reduction alongside 69-72% to non-physical damage reduction of the element that you choose. This of course also stacks with the 8 HP per second regeneration that is added to the 5 HP per second regeneration that we already have, totaling 13 HP per second regeneration. This will once again last about 70 to 80 seconds depending on how efficient you are at casting. In this case, knowledge is very important, and if you know which damage type each boss deals, then you can counter it and take very little damage from its attacks. On the other hand, if you know that you're fighting a boss that gives you many chances to hit it, then going in with the offensive setup is definitely the way. Adapt to your situation and come out victorious. The last thing that I want to talk about in regards to this build is health. One of the most important things for a tank is how much HP it has. For this reason, I will break down the different amounts of health that we can achieve thanks to the Flask of Physics and the different great runes of the Demigods. Let's start with the basics. At 60 Vigor, we have 1900 HP. This is our baseline. Then, with the help of the Talismans, Earth Tree Fravor plus 2 and Crimson Amber Medallion plus 2, we have 2134 HP. We can further increase this HP bar with the help of two mechanics, the Flask of Physics and the Great rune of the demigods. Starting with the great rune, I use Morgoth's rune, which increases our HP by an additional 25%. This brings our health to a total of 2667 HP. And then on top of this, we can temporarily increase our health further with the Flask of Physics. I use the Crimson Spill Crystal Tear for an additional 10% maximum HP, in combination with the Crimson Burst Crystal Tear, for an additional 7 HP per second regeneration. This lasts for 3 minutes, and it will put us 
at a total of 2934 maximum HP with a total of 12 HP per second regeneration thanks to the stacks with the Icon Shield and the Blessed Do Talisman. This is a really good setup for when you are the host of your world trying to solo bosses. 2667 HP static at all time is very good and the possibility of maxing out at 2934 HP for 3 minutes with a consistent 12 HP per second regeneration is extremely useful. Remember that we have a base 47% physical damage reduction, so our effective HP based on damage taken is considerable. Remember when I spoke about the Prayerful Strike Ash of War? Well, let's review that it heals you and your allies for 30% of your maximum health for every enemy that you hit. So, if we can max out at 2934 total HP and we heal 30% of that, then that means that Prayerful Strike will heal us for a total of 880 HP per enemy that we hit. I will repeat that, per enemy that we hit. To put it into perspective, a fully upgraded plus 12 Crimson Flask heals us for 810 HP. This means that Prayerful Strike, costing only 20 FP to use, will heal us and our allies for more HP than one of our maximum upgraded flasks. When we are looking to save resources, this is the best way to do it. We can save our flasks for extreme situations, while taking advantage of FP to continue maintaining a healthy character. This is maximum survivability. This is the build type that I used to beat Elden Ring on my first playthrough. This version that I am showing you is completely optimized and min-maxed, so I suspect that it will be even more efficient than the one I used. Currently, this is my go-to build for co-op. I am having a lot of success being summoned as a phantom to tank some bosses or to provide some defensive support. It has been an extremely effective and very fun build to use. If you're looking for a safe build with many defensive options, this is the one for you. If you're looking for a build to explore the lands between, this is the one for you. It is capable of saving your resources and it allows you to experience the game and each fight while letting you make a few more mistakes before you die. Hands down, this is my favorite build and one that I use in every Souls games that I play. I will say this, I think that this version of the build is the best one yet because Elden Ring provides many more options and that means much more success. I truly hope that you enjoy the build and that it brings you as much fun as it brought me. Thank you very much for your time and I hope I get to see you on the next one.